CBS Sports presents Pennzoil at the Half, sponsored by Pennzoil, specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. We welcome you to Pennzoil at the Half. Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg, Dean Smith at halftime. Duke with a 45 38 lead over Oklahoma State. Coach, you'd say the Cowboys have been able to hang around. How have they been able to do that? Well, they have, despite Duke's 67% shooting simply by doing well offensively. And I think Coach Sutton would like it to be 35 28. It's hard to hold the ball a little while and be uh, patient against the Duke defense. Rashawn McLeod has been a major problem for Oklahoma State. They have to lock down on him a little better. And also, I think they need to, again, as Coach said, maybe try to control Temple just a little better. Rashawn McLeod's been a major problem for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, you're right. One of the most dramatic finishes of the tournament so far was provided by a small school from Indiana, Valparaiso, the 13th seed in the Midwest. Their coach is Homer Drew, and the star of the team is his son Bryce. Here's an inside look at a March Madness shining moment. Before the Crusaders took the floor against fourth-seeded Ole Miss, coach Homer Drew rallied the troops. All right, we talked about the three keys. These are his rebounding. Rebounding. One and done. One and done. So these are the goals that we're looking for. I tell you, in Hoosiers, Gene Hackman had a great line. Fundamentals. Why we are here is because we have drastically improved. But it's togetherness that counts. Togetherness brought us here. We won our first win in the NCAA tournament. Through these 11 games, each of you guys have found a way. Whether it's a rebound, a defense, a shot, or a pass, we have found a way. You will find a way today. Yeah. Oh. Just remember David and Goliath and believe. And dear Heavenly Father, if it's in your will, give us a win today, dear Heavenly Father, because all things are possible with you. Amen. 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 Long pass. Bill Jenkins through three for the win. but to give a nice touch pass to Bryce, and Bryce, outstanding shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just, uh, uh, when, when all those times you practice pacer in the gym, that one, one time, baby, it pays one off. Shining you know, moment. Yeah, yeah, fellas. Yeah, fellas. You know, it takes something like that to point it out, but Clark Kellogg and I were talking about this before. Every team practices something every single day, and you don't know if you're going to get a chance to use it, and when it does, it pays off like that. There's no better positive reinforcement than fruit for your labor, and you saw a number of dynamics there, passion, faith, execution, talent, all of those ingredients key for being successful. It was a fun, shining moment. Valparaiso is just one of the teams that you'll be seeing a bit later on. Here's our lineup. Western Michigan against Stanford, and then Valpo will play Florida State in the south. It'll be St. Louis against number two, Kentucky, and Syracuse will take on the Lobos of New Mexico. Now, speaking of New Mexico, Lobos guard David Gibson suffered a concussion on Friday in the game against Butler on this play. A CAT scan at the University of Kentucky Medical Center has revealed no damage to his skull that is the good news he will dress today and warm up however his activity today is questionable so that's a wait and see attitude for guard david gibson of new mexico now we turn to coach dean smith you know trajan langdon is three out of seven today but he was 0 for 7 on friday night coach what is duke going to do in the second half o, he's never been 0 for 7 and you look for duke this is one of their special sets they have several plays they want to get Langdon open. Wojciechowski will start this way, and this, as, as Wojciechowski starts here, this other guard's here, and watch for McLeod or any big man, headhunt X-21. So here comes Langdon, and he will really crush X-21, and Wojo will probably hit Langdon, who then could throw to McLeod or make a drive. But he, when they need a basket, this is their favorite set, and Langdon usually scores. All right, Coach, I thought he retired. 
Yeah, he can still do that I with the best of them. I think he can. Second, second uh, half of action coming up in just a moment from Rupp Arena. Duke and Oklahoma State as we continue in a moment. Pennzoil at the half has been sponsored by Pennzoil. Specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Gottlieb doesn't keep his body between himself and the ball. Bojo reaches all, gets it. Now he leads it towards the basket. His carry weight coming down should have hit Langdon on the side. He was a little bit upset. You see that arm movement. Very rarely do you see a Duke player show any facial or physical moves when they're disappointed with their teammates. Out of the timeout and a little conversation with his coach. Carroll back on the floor as Peterson makes his move and it's a block against Langdon. First on Trajan and the first team foul of the half against the Blue Devils. Well, the Cowboys getting a bit of a break on Duke turnovers here, particularly on that breakaway when Carowell took the steps, opening the door for the Cowboys. He didn't take advantage of this in that one. Would have been 11-point spread. He makes this one and knocks it down to uh, eight. Uh, yesterday we witnessed an underdog that uh, in every facet of the game played hard, played well, but could not finish either at the line or shoot well from the floor. That's what cost North Carolina Charlotte against North Carolina. Today the Cowboys have to hit on all cylinders. McLeod and uh, Mason, you heard Eddie Sutton say earlier in his interview with uh, Craig James, he's getting it too easily. That time was another example. Battleway uh, hits to the weak side. That's the third foul against Desmond Mason. St. Anthony's High School in Jersey City, and uh, you talk about uh, the energy and the in intensity of Wojciechowski as he takes a seat and Avery returns. Well, Sean McLeod perhaps uh, one of the most uh, intense on the floor, and uh, the numbers today, outstanding. He's steady and he's consistent. Of the freshmen, Shane Battier is the best passer, in my opinion. He fans the ball to the weak side with no problem. And they extend the defense. With Gottlieb out of the game and Chad Alexander in, Duke comes out to extend. Robish. Would have counted had it gone. That is a, a matchup they can take advantage of when McLeod is forced to check Robich without a double team. And that's the third against Roshan, so mark that down. Just over five minutes deep in the second half, and the most effective offensive force for the Devils hit with uh, his third foul. Um, McLeod will come out. They won't let him play with that many fouls, at least to get his head into the game. Not, uh, not bad, though, when you can go to Brand. Yes. <laughs> There's an equalizer. Not as, uh, not as mobile as McLeod, but uh, more physical. I don't know that I've ever seen Al as a freshman, a player as thick that has an all-floor game like an Elton Brand. Well, Elton Brand, what he does, he runs the court like a number three, like a bowler. There's a steal. Grand larceny from Atkins. Good decision that time by Avery. Could have created a three-point play if he went to try to block that shot. Good numbers. Nice bounce pass. Wow! Everything but a finish. Here come the Cowboys. Peterson waits for some help. Heady decision. Numbers weren't right on that break. Now this, uh, with Gottlieb off the floor, the Cowboys can carve into this lead. Very important. Duke has turned it over 14 times today. Peterson off the pick. Ooh, play, maybe. Wave it off. They're calling a moving pick on Robish. Eddie Sutton has come to midcourt. He can't believe it. That's the T. Oh, a quick T on Eddie. Oh, 
with a six-point play in the first half. Now this could possibly be three and two and one. It could be a seven-point play. We should point out that the call was made by Jim Copenhaver, the alternate who was forced to come in when Tom O'Neill pulled his hamstring. And Eddie Sutton cannot believe that a moving screen was called. And that is the third foul on Robich. And that is a double whammy. I don't think the call was that bad. He did move on the pick. There it is moving. But the thing that Todd Freco tells for everybody is that he made the three-point shot. Yeah, and then Eddie Sutton picked up a technical foul. And it's automatic when you come out of the coaching box. And as I mentioned, Eddie has come all the way to midcourt. So he knew he earned the team. If Duke scores here, it could make it a long campfire for the Cowboys. McLeod. Now we'll see if this uh, energizes the Cowboys and the fans that have uh, gotten behind them here at Rupp Arena. Atkins turned it over. Brand saves it. But Peterson regathers. A leaner. Now this is exactly the kind of play Duke wants. Avery. 61-52. Got to get Gottlieb back in the ball game to set this team down now. That was a two-point game to a seven-point game. Two sequences in both halves. The one we just witnessed and the one when the game was tied at 28. The six-point sequence. Another near steal. Alexander from the corner. Pulled down by Chappelle. Brand. Oklahoma State's defense always a factor, though they have given up a lot of points today. They have forced a number of turnovers, uncharacteristic of Mike Krzyzewski's coach teams. They'll double down on Brand gets the ball in the low post. Here he comes into the low post. Where's the double? Double, there it comes. That one was deflected by Peterson. Well, Mike Krzyzewski very rarely sees his team turn it over that many times. Atkins! 15 for Joe Atkins, playing the strings like Chet Atkins. Whoa! Brand. Nice block by Mason, all ball. Not there, Alexander. Got to take it around the horn. There it is. Well, they've responded to the technical. Down six with the ball. But Duke keeps the pressure on. Constant. Avery, the long rebound. Now, with Gottlieb off the floor, they are looking for Atkins and Peterson each time down. And there's the reach in foul. Very obvious. That is a 16 foul. From now on, it's one and one. Duke goes to the line. Every time you kick the ball down low, they double team on Brand. The percussion section in all ages, we might add, for Duke. That's Dr. Clyde Young tooting his own horn about his Duke Blue Devils as you see our CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Oklahoma State getting double Duke's points off turnovers, and that is very rare. It's kept them in this game. Carowell leaning in on Peterson, and Adrian will pick up the foul. They go for one and one. Duke has only committed three personal fouls in the second half here, so they got three to give. Duke's turnover margin this year, plus eight. That was best in the Atlantic Coast Conference by far. This year, Eddie Sutton's turned the tables. Uh, today, the, Eddie's turned the tables on that stat of the year for the Devils. 16 turnovers committed by Duke. And when you're shooting that well, and uh, Duke's had to shoot that well to maintain a lead because they've turned it over so often. This Daniel buries his second. He creates his own shots off the dribble. 
Gottlieb, Robish, Montanati, Peterson, and Joe Atkins on the floor for the Cowboys. Langdon, Wojciechowski, Batier, Brand, and Carowell for Duke. Peterson off the pick. Caught in no man's land on the baseline. Was really looking for Robish. Had to throw up a prayer. I don't think the Cowboys can keep Mason out too much longer. They need more scoring power out there. Trying to get the ball down to Brand if they possibly can here. Clock down to 10. Gottlieb working on Wojo. Shows through the pick. Battier. Nice cut by Langdon. Too strong. He rushed the shot. That's Eddie Sutton's defense. Normally, that's automatic. Good decision not to shoot. Robish. Oh, I thought that was a beautiful block that time. Jimmy Burr got some body with Brand. Although the block was effective, he got him with that large, wide body. Yeah. Got him down below, but up the top, all leather. A little bit too much body. Here's another angle of the same play. Watch down low here. Robin His body lean on him. Robish doesn't have that physical strength to handle a kid like Brand. Scott missing foul shots and Scott getting tired. He had made them all prior to that miss. Six of seven now. Eddie Sutton does have the luxury to give Brett a rest here. Like they'd rest him up for the last four minutes of the game. Uh, it has been an uphill climb all day, but one of the reasons those two sequences, one in each half, a six-point play off a three-pointer and a foul, then a missed shot and another three by Langdon, and then a technical off a moving pick that could have been points for Oklahoma State turned into a five-point swing for Duke. The crowd's back in with four personal fouls. <laughs> This is where Eddie Sutton's at his best. A sticky half-court defense, forcing Duke to utilize a lot of the clock. Langdon a pull-up. McLeod keeps it alive. Rojo. I don't think Rojo should have taken the shot that quickly that time with a fresh clock. Wojciechowski one for five from the floor today. Building will explode if Oklahoma State scores here. Nice kick out to the corner, but Peterson, yes! Patterson. Peterson, excuse me. On the deck. Mason comes back in. Coach McGuire calling for him a moment ago, and he trots onto the floor as Peterson leaves. Peterson will not be out for a minute. If he's out for a minute, that'll be a long time. He has to get back in the game. Johnny Ryder Pony here, Ring Olivia. We used to play it in the Bronx in New York. Everybody jump on everybody. <laughs> They're piling on. They've outscored Duke 9 to 1 in the last 508. Mason has to show his offensive skills. Eddie Sutton, not at all happy that Gottlieb took that time out. He'd like to have as many as possible down the stretch. The Duke lead is three. From Lexington, McLeod the story for Duke, but they've only scored one point since he picked up his fourth foul. The points off turnovers, a catalyst for Oklahoma State. Interesting that Godley would call that timeout. We were in a TV timeout zone at the four-minute mark. There would have been an automatic timeout. Now, Eddie Sutton, without any timeouts remaining for the remainder of this game, he was very upset with his guard when he called it. 29 seconds ahead of the automatic timeout. Peterson throws up a brick. They made a mistake that time. Got to get the ball to Mason. Well, McLeod's covering with the three, with the four foul. Whoever McLeod is covering, the Cowboys got to get the ball into that man's hands offensively. McLeod is covering now again. Mason, you got to get the ball to Mason. You get McLeod out of there, you got an edge. 
There you see the turnover story. That's kept the Cowboys in it. Now they'll have to play the distance with only an automatic timeout after the four-minute mark. They will have no team timeouts, either 20s or fulls, the rest of the way. Well, that was a hot. That was a clear walk prior to the shot. It went uncalled. Got away with a little tiny step. It wasn't a big one. Cleaner and the foul against Langdon. Uh, now take a look at this the reception of the pass and the bunny hop. And on the left side, his indecision, he doesn't know whether to take the shot or not, puts the ball down, and close. May I, that's a close call. I, I didn't see that one dribble. Now the hop it. came on the reception prior to the dribble. And uh, obviously that was part of the argument from Eddie Sutton. I think the Cowboys have oh, taken Mason back out. I don't know why they didn't go to Mason. Whoever, whoever the guy's covering, whoever McLeod's covering, you got to get the ball to that man. Sixty-nine, sixty-six. Lifetime left. Three minutes and change. Assassin is back. 15 for him today. He had two subpar performances in the ACC final against North Carolina. And then for the first time in his life, at any level in organized basketball, no points against Radford in the opening round. Robich, nice back door. Peterson, too strong. Montanati lost it. Now the Devils trying to close the door on the Cowboys. Spread it out a little bit, try to kick it into McLeod. And he cannot get to his teammate uh, to his team because there's no timeouts left. It should all end up with McLeod with the ball at the very end, about seven seconds to go. Shot clock winding down. Carowell. All the long rebounds are dropped. Back to do. Brand has 10. You got two seconds to get it over. They just got it over. Adkins was waiting on Peterson who had to adjust his shoe. Adkins. Oh, the iron on time to Oklahoma State. Peterson with a fresh block. Turovich. Oh, he rattles one home. He touched all of the iron. Big Dave, his dad, looks on with high anxiety. Two-shot possession game. They'll milk the clock down to under double digits. Top seed trying to advance. Duke knocked out by a 10-seed Providence a year ago, a team that would push Arizona. He's right on him. Could be a five-count here, Tim. Langdon gives it up to Wojo. McLeod. Way too strong. Nice rebound by Atkins. And the foul on Brand is his fourth. And that's the sixth on Duke. So from now on, it's one and one. For Duke, So McLeod with four, Brand with four. Hold on to that thought if we uh, are forced to play an extra session. We have a 20 second timeout, Duke. 20-second timeout taken by the Devils. Well, one of the reasons uh, everyone in Kentucky is upset with Mike Krzyzewski perhaps may be what happened back in 1992, if you recall. The pass in Rick Pitino will never forgive himself for not guarding the inbounds pass. Grant Hill with a baseball pass to Leitner, and Christian knocked it down. 
by guarding the inbound pass, you got to throw the ball high and allows your defensive men to get around wherever the ball be ends up. Well, Rick Patino also told me, Al, that he was upset with himself as a coach because the last thing he said to his players, don't foul. And John Pelfrey, he didn't feel guarded him as well as he might have had not Rick made that statement to him. Well, you see the possession arrow to Duke? Yes. Two possession game here. The Cowboys got to come up with something here. They got to try to look for Peterson to drive. Maybe pick up a foul. Mason back on the floor. That's a walk. And Eddie Sutton still upset with Copenhaver. Two calls that the alternate official has made today. Clearly the moving pick was accurate against Robish, but it came at such a key time. Oh, they got a they got a foul now. You got to get up. Got a foul. I wouldn't foul Langdon, but I'd foul anybody else. You got a foul. There's the reach. And Trajan's such an outstanding free throw shooter, though he missed two last night. Adkins picks up the foul in second. Trajan was 0 for 2 last night at the line, a 90% free throw shooter on the year. Alexander checks in. So Gottlieb sits. The reason they haven't got Leap sit here, they need three-point shots, and Gottlieb can't hit from out. And he's also a liability at the free throw line. Should uh, you only shoot 52% or 53%, mm -hmm. which is rare for a guard. Usually they can bury them, especially the son of a coach. Still a two-possession game. Uh, this would make it a three-possession game if Langdon knocks it down. Duke's all-time free-throw leader, Trajan Langdon, giving them a three-possession game, 75-68. The bomb by Peterson. Oh, he almost used the window again. Robish was on the line. It belongs to the Devils. Time may be running out on the Cowboys. But for Duke, the program that last year is a two-seed, Knocked out by Providence at 10. They got the front court to go with the back court this year and apparently preparing to punch their ticket to the Sweet 16. Carowell is a 65% shooter at the free throw line. He's among those you'd like to foul rather than Langdon. It is uh, all she wrote. It's time for the Cowboys to saddle up and ride into the sunset. Had a great year. Outstanding year, especially at the end with a thin bench. Eddie Sutton, the old war horse, has uh, showed some great coaching moves today, but there was just too much Duke and too much Mike Krzyzewski. And remember those two sequences, Al. Six-point play in the first half. The technical on the moving pick, a five-point swing in the second. Joe Atkins hits a three. The five-point game, no timeouts remaining. Uh, obviously, Coach Sutton could have utilized one right after that three-point shot rather than having to give up the foul. But uh, we should not be critical of those early timeouts because the Cowboys were trying to stop Duke runs. You've got to stop Duke runs. You've got to, even if you use up all your timeouts in the first half, what's good is having timeouts at the end of the game if you're down 25 points. Eddie Sutton's a pro at using his timeouts. He used timeouts to stop momentum. Duke can beat you so many ways. But the key to Duke is McLeod. So somewhere along the line here, the four freshmen will tighten up. It's going to be up to the big brothers to take care of the thing. A couple of Hall of Famers on the sidelines today, future Hall of Famers, Sutton and Krzyzewski. Adkins, Mason the follow. And a quick foul with 3.3 remaining. Now give Oklahoma State credit. The big guns from... The Big 12 perhaps overshadowed by Kansas and their yellow brick road run, but they certainly handled 
Duke's pressure today hung around all day. Did an excellent job again. What they what they do, they're defensive oriented. What surprised me a couple of times on rebounds, the Cowboys really went in the fast break and outran Duke. But Duke's an excellent, excellent ball club. I don't see any weakness. The only weakness would be backdoor with overplaying defensively. Elton Brand had to play in foul difficulty, and as he mentioned to us, uh, we're still making adjustments to my return. I'm happy to be back, but my teammates are having to understand where I am on the floor. And there you can see uh, Alexander, even in defeat, understanding how hard and how well this Cowboys team plays. If you're going to beat Duke, you've got to have a long bench. That's a must. You've got to get back at least eight, nine men. The Blue Devils move on to the Sweet 16. They're headed to St. Petersburg. Eddie Sutton congratulates Mike Krzyzewski. Roshan McLeod was the star of this game. Our final score, 79 to 73. As we check the brackets in the South region, again, the higher seeds continue to hold serve. Duke will await the winner of Syracuse and New Mexico to follow. Our Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, Roshan McLeod with 22 and Brett Robish with 19. For Al McGuire and Craig James, Tim Brando, so long from Lexington, Kentucky. Coming up in just a moment, back to Special K, Dean Smith, and Greg Gumbel in our New York studio. Rejected by Hamid. Three seconds left. You're nervous. You gotta know where he is. Tim Brando with the call as Syracuse defeated Iona 63-61 on Friday, and they will play uh, New Mexico, the tip time of that game coming up at 2.31 Eastern time for those of you ticketed to see that game. Meanwhile, Duke advances the third AC team to make it to the Sweet 16 along with Maryland and North Carolina. Uh, they played a good game against an Oklahoma State team that hung in there all day long. Yeah, I think a couple of things. One, McLeod and Langdon were huge for Duke, and then Oklahoma State had some opportunities, Greg, and they were just unable to convert those had they gotten some scores at critical times this thing could have been a different game yeah Langdon had 17 points after going scoreless against that tough Radford defense coach he does all right once he gets away from well, the he's, he's always a scorer they had the whole package there's four returning starters and seven great great young players so watch out for this year and the future well coach Mike Krzyzewski chalks up his 42nd tournament win second only to Dean Smith and John Wooden Al McGuire talked with him after the game uh, congratulations Mike it was a long afternoon. Well, it's a really long afternoon because you know from coaching, Al, you're one of the all-time best, that they're a pain. Yeah. They just play every possession. They got an out-of-bounds play for everything. They come out of timeouts with stuff, and they play really good defense. You know what I thought he was doing to you, Mike? I thought he was playing from timeout to timeout. I, I agree with you, and they almost went to a different strategy sometimes on the offense every timeout. And for our team, the younger guys, we didn't adjust to it all the time, depending on the lineup I had in. What did you tell McLeod when he had four fouls going back in there? That was a big move. Well, we've, we've played him with four fouls, so I think the experience of having done that before, he's smart, he's a fifth-year senior, and he's been our key player down the stretch. See, I thought they made a mistake, Mike, in not getting the ball to Mason in there when McLeod was guarding him to get the fifth foul. I thought he might let him go drive freely. Well, I think because we did a good job on Mason and they felt that the three was going for him, they, may, you know, they were getting some open shots, so they just didn't go to him. Well, I wish you a lot of luck Thank down there in much. Florida, my man. Thank you, all. So Coach K headed for St. Petersburg. These are the games coming up next. Those of you who are looking ahead to St. Louis and Kentucky, we'll start you on Valparaiso, Florida State, and get you to your tip. And those looking for New Mexico against Syracuse, you will start on Western Michigan against Stanford, and we will get you to your tip-off of your game as well. We'll take a time out here and then continue on the road to the Final Four in a moment. One of the second round games headed your way shortly will take place in Atlanta, Georgia, between the Billikens of St. Louis and the Wildcats of the University of Kentucky. Here are Jim Nance and Billy Packer. 
St. Louis and Kentucky just a few minutes away here at the Georgia Dome in a bracket loaded with traditional powers. UCLA and Michigan coming up later. Then you factor in Kentucky. Those three programs have all been to the Final Four in the 90s, but what about the underdog team St. Louis here today, Billy? Well, Jim, they're led by a freshman. That usually spells trouble. Larry Hughes, who, by the way, has a strained foot, but he is going to play. He's got some soreness there. It's not an ankle. It is a foot. He's the second-leading freshman scorer in the country. He had his hands full with Mike Babel early in the game against Massachusetts but scored the last nine points. He is a sensational performer. Even with Hughes, if he lights it up, the question for the Billikens, can they stop the big man in the middle for Kentucky, Nazi Muhammad? Nazi Muhammad has developed into one of the premier centers in all of college basketball. Great hands, as you can see right there, a tremendous finisher, a young man with tremendous work ethic who has become a real dominant factor in the SEC and for Kentucky on the inside. So St. Louis and Kentucky, just a few minutes away. Right now, let's go back to Greg Gumbel in New York. All right, Jim, St. Louis and Kentucky, one of the games coming your way, and we'll continue on the road to the Final Four after this word from your local station. These are the games coming up. The first one's coming your way, Western Michigan and Stanford and Valparaiso, Florida State. Now, those of you looking ahead to Kentucky against St. Louis, tip time is 2.30. You'll start on the Florida State-Valparaiso game, and we'll get you to the tip-off of your game. Those of you looking ahead to Syracuse, New Mexico, tip time is 2.31. You'll start on Western Michigan and Stanford, and then we'll get you out for the tip-off of your game. We'll get to all of that coming up on CBS right after this. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by Pizza Hut. MCI. Nissan. <laughs> 